Um, I'm Mallory. I'm the head of content here at Culture, and we are very excited for our partnership with um, Fromage from Europe. Again, we did this last year, and it was a really successful campaign, so we're doing it again. And um, this webinar is just going to serve as a primer for what we're hoping to expect from this campaign with our real retailer partnerships. Um, we have Aurora Druin, who is going to be talking a little bit about the actual campaign. Um, and we also have Madame Fromage, Tanaya Darlington, who's going to do the bulk of the presentation, talking about the actual cheeses, flavors, merchandising, and just like a quick, like I said, primer on all things French cheese. So um, this format is a little different. I know Culture in the Past has generally done like a closed webinar, but we wanted this to be very interactive. Um, we want y'all to ask questions, feel free to jump in. Um, Tanaya mentioned earlier, she has a fun little game she might play with everyone. So um, don't be afraid to jump in and ask those questions and provide that commentary too. So uh, without further ado, I'll let Aurora get started on going over the campaign and um, then Tanaya will take it from there. So go Aurora. <laughs> Thank you, Mallory. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining. Uh, always a pleasure to see everybody gathering around cheeses, specifically French cheeses. Um, the uh, campaign, let me talk to you a little bit about what this campaign is. So this campaign is called Fromage from Europe. And as you can probably tell, this is a campaign that is uh, European funded, um, which means that the main focus of the primary focus of the campaign is um, promoting European products. On top of that, what we are focusing on, as you heard from the entirety of the campaign name, we're focusing more on French cheeses. So this is a campaign that uh, is um, uh, a collaboration between two entities. You have on one hand uh, the French Dairy Interbranch Organization, which represents all of the cows, milk, dairy farms, co-ops, um, and uh, processors. And on the other hand, you have the French Goats Milk Producers and Processors Association. So you're basically looking at a campaign that uh, focuses on both cow, French cow cheeses and uh, French um, goat cheeses. Um, ultimately, uh, what we are doing with this campaign and what we have done, because this is a campaign that has been going on for uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of years, uh, I wanna say a total of six years, if not, um, if not more, is to create awareness around all of the different varieties of cheeses uh, that are available in Europe, particularly French cheeses, again, uh, and really uh, introduce them to the U.S. consumer, uh, debunk almost the myth behind, you know, uh, uh, those European French cheeses and show how accessible they actually are to the U.S. consumer. Uh, we want to spotlight these cheeses. We want to show the quality behind these cheeses. We know that there's a lot of AOPs. We have amazing certifications for those um, to ultimately just make people excited about uh, all, of these, uh, all of these different types of cheeses. So if you go on the next slide, uh, this will be uh, just some interesting little resources that uh, uh, you can check out if you want to learn more about all of the different types of cheeses um, that, we're, that, we're, that we're showcasing. We have the website, all of the pages. I encourage you to follow all, all of our all of our social media because we post some really some really nice cool content we post recipes uh we also you know we show a lot about the aesthetic of the cheese we educate consumers on the cheese as well um and just to go a little bit more into detail as to what we're doing right now today and why we're doing this partnership with culture uh, i mean We've been working uh, and partnering with culture for, uh, for, for numerous times now. And um, we know and we understand that the best way uh, to, to promote uh, all of the, the, the amazing qualities of cheeses that I've talked to you right now is to partner with a, a, a somebody who can actually increase and enhance these messages and bring additional consumer awareness um, through also uh, store tastings and collaborations. So this is exactly what we're doing here today. And um, this is what Tanaya will be getting into more details for in regards to the cheeses and also how you can talk about it and present them uh, as part of your in-store experience. So without further ado, Tanaya, I will leave the floor to you. 
Okay, thanks so much. Hello, friends. Um, I'm Tanaya Darlington, Madame Fromage Online. And uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be part of this today um, because not only do I love French cheese, in fact, I'm in Belgium, uh, six hours, five hours ahead of you, surrounded by French cheese, including one I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tonight. Um, but also I'm really a product of a wonderful experience at a cheese counter. If you've heard my story, you know, I moved to Philadelphia in 2005 from the state of Wisconsin. I didn't know a single person. And out of homesickness, I landed at the De Bruna Brothers shop in the Italian market. And I asked for a Wisconsin cheese called Pleasant Ridge Reserve. And the two mongers behind the counter said, wow, you know, nobody has ever come in here and asked for that cheese by name. You must really love cheese. And I said, I do. And then they said, well, we have that cheese. We're going to cut it for you in a minute. But do you want to taste something that is tasting really good right now? And of course, I said, yes. And they gave me my first bite of French Roquefort. They said, have you ever had real French Roquefort? And I said, no, I grew up eating Maytag blue cheese in Iowa and Roquefort cr crumbles. Quite honestly, I've never had real Roquefort. And they proceeded to you know, cut a fresh piece, show me how to kind of melt it a bit between my fingers. We smelled the cheese together, put it on my tongue. They told me to savor it, let it melt a moment, and then to try to just really think my way through the flavors I was experiencing. And as they tasted it and talked me through it, and you know, one said, oh my gosh, I'm getting a lot of minerals on the front end. And the other said, Oh, now I'm getting like creamed spinach as it begins to melt. And the, the other one responded, yeah, but I'm also getting like this little load of, note of licorice on the finish. Are you getting that? It was the first time I'd ever heard professionals talk about cheese and share their appreciation. And that moment changed my life. I was homesick. I was new in town. I didn't know any place, anyone or any place. And I thought, I'm going to come back here every week and get to know these guys. And I want to eat every cheese in this shop. And I did. I started a blog about it. And I returned to those guys, Hunter and Zeke, week after week and got into the sort of friendship with them where they were even texting me when like Loire Valley goat cheeses were arriving. They knew I was so passionate. But my passion really came from the curiosity they stilled in me about their selections. And so that's why I'm happy and, and really honored to be here with you today because I feel that you are on the front lines of cheese loving curiosity, right? We call them customers, but, customers, but really anyone who comes to a cheese counter is a, a cheese lover in training. And so I hope that some of the tips I can offer to you today or some of the questions that I can ask will inspire you to think about um, how you interact with uh, consumers around French cheese and really all cheese. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I'm going to start off by showing you a map. There's a lot happening in this slide. So just focus on the map on the left. And um, I want you to begin at the top with Mimolette and just let your eye move in a clockwise fashion down the map and to see what do you see any favorites, Your any personal favorites of yours? Do you see any favorites of customers or things that customers have asked for? And are there any cheeses on this map, on this little black and white map that you don't recognize? I invite you to drop anything in the chat that you observe. Do you know Mimolette? Is it on your counter now because it's Halloween? It's such a bright kind of Halloween cheese. Um, Comte, is this something that your customers ask for? Coming down around the bottom, formed on bear, beautiful blue. And then up in the center, blue d'Auvergne in Auvergne, et poisse in Burgundy. And then off to the left, Loire Valley, the goat cheeses coming up through Normandy, Camembert. Any favorites? I'd love to hear from you. Either personal favorites or cheeses that customers have asked for. Since we're a pretty small group, you're also just welcome to 
uh, jump in and, and respond, unmute um, yourself and respond. All right, I'm seeing Comte, always a favorite, certainly one of the great table cheeses of France. And I feel like anyone who travels there is introduced to Comte. Someone says, love them all. Okay, Lindsay. <laughs> Fantastic form. Absolutely. Um, Market Hall Foods, what do you love to pair with form? Just out of curiosity. Also, I'm so excited that someone mentioned the boulette, right? Such a, a, a cheese with a great story, wonderful spices, and I think it, it really embodies the humor of French culture. Nothing bites a ri nice ripe camembert with a hunk of crusty sourdough bread. Gorgeous. All right. You're all very, uh, you're very astute. Perfect. Ah, I've never fried, tried French cheese, Ryan says. Which one would be the first you would recommend? Well, Ryan, I'm kind of, I have a big personality and a love of strong cheese. So I'm going to send you right into the bullpen with a poisse. The poisse is there in the center from Burgundy. It's neon orange in color. You can't miss it in the cheese case. It's gooey and custard-like and tastes a lot to me like a hearty beef stew. Mm. Uh, in fact, it's always the cheese I serve the night before Thanksgiving when you're starting to crave meat because you're cooking all of the stuffing and everything like that, but there's no turkey in the oven yet. So I love to serve a really ripe poisse on Thanksgiving evening, get everyone in the mood for meat the next day, and we have a meatless evening the night before. So Ryan, if you're someone who likes something a bit meaty, or even if you are on the meatless camp, Start with a poisse. It is a, a perfect baptism into the beauty of French cheese. Anybody else want to give Ryan a tip as to where he might start? Maybe maybe someone else has a softer touch, a more a, a more of a velvet glove approach. Okay, Omar Marois, fantastic! Another beautiful stinker from France. Chevre, easy intro, absolutely fresh goat cheese. All right, beautiful. Oh, also irati, sure. Triple cream, definitely wonderful. Uh, are there any cheeses on this map you don't recognize, you've never seen before? Omar, a great offering there. Start with a pyramid like Valence or an ashy log of chef. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful suggestion. Okay, not familiar with Vosges. Ah, the Vosges Mountains. That's not actually a cheese, although there is a, a tome from there, but uh, the Vosges Mountains are simply a geographical marking. No problem, Lindsay. Uh, excellent. Okay, let's do the next slide. We can always come back, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of France. One of the cool things about France is that it's uh, more agricultural than not. It's 52% agriculture. And uh, when I started traveling to France really seriously, about five or six years ago to work on a new book, one of the things that blew my mind was to drive from Paris to a brie maker. I felt like I was in Iowa. It was flat fields, pastures full of cows. It's not how I picture it, sort of the landscape of brie, but in fact, you know, it felt a lot like the Midwest, our own agricultural belt in the United States. If you get a chance to take your imagination out of the cheese case and onto the roadways, you'll find that France is a really exciting place just to road trip. You can do it very easily. It's easy to get around. Everything is well marked and you'll pass one village after another named after French cheeses. One of my very favorite things to do is just to pull over when I see a sign for Chaurs or Benon. You know, these small cheeses that are so beautiful. And I, you know, of course, didn't even think that, of course, they're just named after a little village and you can go right there and see where they're made. So cheese in France is so accessible, not like in the United States where you have to like really drive around, you know, with binoculars on almost to find cheesemakers in France. They're everywhere. And uh, the Tourism Bureau is very good at making you aware of what cheese uh, region you are in. Langre, Austin says, yes, such a beautiful, beautiful sticker cheese. All right, so this is a quick review, categories of French cheese. 
Um, you're seeing the French print, uh, French spellings there at the top, but they really do correspond with the way we think of cheese in the States from French uh, frais cheeses, which are your fresh cheeses up at the top. Maybe the most common in a shop would be fromage blanc, which I often describe as like just the best cream cheese you've ever tried. Wonderful on a piece of toast or a bagel. And then you have your croute fleuri, which is the bloomy rind cheeses, literally a flowering crust cheese is what that means in French. You've got your camemberts, your brise, chaours, a really wonderful, wonderful, rich, decadent cheese. Then you have your croute lave, your washed crust or wash rind cheeses. That's the orange uh, category there where you have Langre, Munster, Epois, Pont Levesque up in Normandy. Uh, you've got the Perseillet, the blue cheeses, Comme d'Ambert, which we've mentioned, Roquefort, which I told you about, um, several others, Bleu d'Auvergne in the central, from the central region of France, uh, made, uh, from cows grazing on volcanic soils. That's one of my all-time favorite blue cheeses. And then down at the bottom, you have your uncooked pressed cheeses, your Toms, Cantal, and your cooked pressed cheeses like Emmental, Comte, your very waxy, good melters. And then you have your fondue, which would be uh, more of your industrial style, um, kind of prepared cheese, sauces, things like that, your fondues. And then your fromage de chèvre, your goat cheeses there on the right with the crottin de chèvre and yol. Valence, as someone mentioned. So uh, my goal here is just to give you an, uh, an understanding that in France, all styles of cheese are made. So it's the same style categories we really have in the United States, so they're familiar to you. But really, it's a country that is has a rich history in all styles of cheese, whether you love stinkers, blues, goat cheeses. It's a lot more than just brie, which is what a lot of people associate French cheese with. All right, to the next slide. Now, so this is getting into how to inspire a little curiosity with cheese. Remember the story I told you, I was looking for a Wisconsin cheese and the cheesemonger very cleverly said to me, do you want a bite of something that's tasting really good right now? And who is going to say no to that? I never would have walked into that shop asking for French Roquefort because my mind says Roquefort crumble, right? And so I wasn't interested. Uh, but then I was exposed to something that I, I couldn't imagine uh, and, and told the story of French Roquefort. And it was so interesting. It really appealed to me as a writer. Um, and, and so just that moment of being offered something I didn't ask for was exciting. But those two cheesemongers, Zeke and Hunter, could tell I liked good cheese because I was so specific about my request for that particular Wisconsin cheese. So they were able to read, ah, this person, she's looking for quality. Let's give her something that she maybe doesn't know, but that's really wonderful. Um, so here's maybe some ways to think about customer handling. If someone asks for a brie, why not introduce them to something else? Another French cheese. You might say, oh, you, you're a brie lover. Okay, I get it. You love deeply lush cheeses. Maybe you're having a party. Do you want another cheese that's like great for a celebration? Or maybe you want to introduce your friends to something a little bit different. Have you ever heard of Colomier? Or have you ever had a Saint-André? just to inspire them to taste what they already know. I think of this as a comfort cheese, right? They, their comfort cheese is brie. And you just bring them uh, something a bit new that they already know they're going to like, um, but you, you awaken their curiosity for something else. Um, or if your guest is familiar with Comte, you might say, oh, wonderful. So you know how great Comte is. Have you ever had Beaufort or Abondance or Emmental? And you give them a taste. And maybe you even taste the Comte next to Abondance or Beaufort with them. And, and you talk a little bit about, okay, the Comte, maybe it's a bit more fruity, it's a bit nuttier, but maybe over here the Beaufort has a bit more sweetness. Help them contextualize these cheeses in terms of flavors and, and how they differ. Um, so I think that could be a fun one to play with around the holidays. And then a poise. 
as I mentioned, this is a real favorite. Epoise is famous for being allegedly so stinky it's illegal on French trains. So, of course, I've had to carry an actual Epoise on a French train. I took one from Paris to Versailles, a very ripe one, just to see would anyone notice. And it's a French train. People are used to it, so no problems. Uh, but if someone loves Epoise, first of all, you commend them, right? Because uh, if you love Epoise, you, you love big cheese you love big personality you're not afraid to open the door of your fridge and have that strong um farm-like aroma so why not say hey have you ever had langre that's an interesting little cheese it has a little divot in its uh the top of its rind and you can actually pour a little champagne in it part of a little uh, traditional pairing get them excited about another uh wash wine cheese from France, Pont Levac, one that I always think is a bit milder, at least the versions I get in the States. So maybe they want something with just a little less punch, uh, something that um, their sister or grandmother would love, uh, or someone who's maybe averse to such strong cheeses. Help them understand that there's a real range in terms of wash wine cheeses, some that are rather mild and others that are quite wild. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So this is where I have a little cheese game show for you. Um, and I, uh, the questions here are great. And I think they're, they're questions that are so useful for beginning a conversation, right? What are you going to use this cheese for? Are you making a cheese board? Is it you're going to be a, a lunch cheese? Is it a brunch cheese? Um, but again, don't hesitate to simply share a cheese that you're excited about or a pairing that you're excited about. So uh, I'm curious to know if you have a good opening line that has worked well for you in terms of getting customers to experiment with trying something new. If so, drop it in the chat. I still love the line of, do you want to taste something that is really good right now? Helps customers understand that not every cheese is the same, especially as the seasons change, and that wheels really can vary, right? uh how adventurous is your crowd oh i like that <laughs> omar that's great how adventurous is your crowd it doesn't put it on the customer right like how wild are you uh but how adventurous is your crowd that's terrific that's terrific anybody else is there a good line sort of an opener that welcomes the person to maybe try something new with you As a customer, one of my favorite lines has always been, what cheese did you take home last night? Which you could reverse by saying, can I tell you about the cheese I took home last night? Who doesn't want to hear that story? What do you typically enjoy? What is your usual fave? Great. So helping them by accessing their comfort cheese and then maybe taking them somewhere else. Do you want to try one of our favorites? I think that's great. Someone who's coming to a cheese counter, right? If they're actually coming and wanting to have a conversation, probably they're looking for a little guidance and hoping to be led to something that maybe they don't know. Terrific. Any other good openers that have worked for you? Okay. Yeah, people ask about favorites and you say, here's what I'm super obsessed with lately. Terrific. Absolutely. Or this one has been very popular today. Sure. Give them a sense of like you're among friends, right? You're among cheese lovers. Okay. So here's where the game show begins. If someone came into your shop asking for a cheese to pair with red wine, because we're in fall season, entertaining season, what French cheese would you recommend? I'm starting with kind of a tough one because I know red wine isn't the easiest to pair with cheese. But what would you suggest? Drop it in the chat. I can give you my tips, but I'm always curious to hear what you enjoy. Blue cheeses with sweet reds. Absolutely. Comte. Okay. With Priorat. Camembert. Sure. I'll just suggest, I always feel like red wine is an opportunity to introduce people to aged cheeses specifically because red wine can be a bit hard to pair with cheese because of the tannins. Often a wine will kind of um, 
be a difficult pairing with a soft cheese, I think, or like a goat cheese, unless it's a gamay. But you could say, you know, a, a bold red usually pairs well with either a bold cheese or an aged cheese. Are you curious to try one of our interesting aged French cheeses, like a Beaufort or like a 24-month Comté? Well, you could find out a little bit more about the wine. Is it a jammy red? Because jammy reds, you know, you could think of it a little bit like a jam, a berry jam. You could pair it with a triple cream. But if it's a tannic red, um, you know, it might have to go in another direction. Yes, great job, Omar. Of course, if it's a red wine from France, figure out what region it's from and suggest the accompanying cheese from that region. Perfect, perfect. Same with white, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how about for bubbly? We're heading into the holidays, towards New Year's. What do you recommend when someone says, I'm celebrating, I'm going to pop a bottle of um, champagne or Cremant? Do you have a go-to from the world of French cheese? Triple creams? Iquas, camembert, very nice. Yeah, anything lush, mouth coating, rich, great with bubbly. In fact, I always feel that bubbles, I mean, you can never go wrong, right? Tomo fleur, all right, what a lovely idea. Chev with herbs de Provence sprinkled on top. That's a gorgeous suggestion. I love that, Lindsay. That's great. I'm curious if any of you have ever made a French 75 cocktail. That's a cocktail with sparkling wine, champagne or cremant, gin, lemon, and a little sugar. It's a classic cocktail, and it's one of my favorite cocktails to pair with cheese because you've got bubbles and acidity. It's wonderful with triple creams and with uh, goat cheeses because the tart note plays well with lemon. So if you wanted to excite your guests um, with an idea for serving triple creams or goat cheeses, encourage them to make a French 75. Boucheron, absolutely another great uh, pairing suggestion. Nice work, Austin. Um, if somebody really loves um, melting cheese, is there a French cheese you would recommend they want to melt it for a sandwich or they're going to make a gratin some sort of a cheesy potato dish okay raclette morbier fantastic what else for a great melter what comes to mind for you emmental also great even a kind of a firm uh Wash rind cheese like a Pont Levesque, great um, warmed. I love like Pont, Pont Levesque pushed into a uh, baked potato instead of butter or sour cream. Um, add some caramelized onions, absolutely fabulous. Simple brie, absolutely, Omar. Yeah, you can melt brie on a sandwich, add some apple slices, some honey, a crank of black pepper, beautiful. Raclette, absolutely French raclette for melting. Perfect. You can make little raclette toasts or break out the full on raclette grill. Okay, very nice, Austin. Uh, how about someone is looking for a light appetizer? They don't want their guests to fill up, but they want to offer a little nish-nosh before the main course. A light appetizer in the way of a French cheese. What would you suggest? Okay, a crotin, a tome, so a nice table cheese, a goat cheese, the lightest of the milks, makes perfect sense. Anything else you would suggest? Maybe they're just gonna serve one cheese. Cantal, very nice. Comté with almonds and dried fruit, always perfect, beautiful. How about if someone wants an after dinner cheese and they don't want to make dessert, they want to serve cheese instead. They're really like in the French mindset, but they want to explore. What would you uh, recommend? Lindsay, Briette Severin, right. A heavy cheese, but so light and fluffy you forget. Uh, for an after dinner cheese, an after dinner cheese board, something in place of dessert, recommendations, French cheeses or even pairings. Ah, very nice.
Blue cheese, of course, we've already talked a little bit about blue cheese and a dessert wine. So it could be Roquefort and Sautern, Bleu d'Auvergne, and uh, a sweet wine. Pommier with fruit compote, very nice. Okay, we're getting very specific, Lindsay. I love it. Chocolate on oat crackers, fleurette, fleurette, tombe de fleurette. Nice. Anything else? Tête de moine. Oh, absolutely. One of my all-time favorites, although it's Switzerland. Certainly blue cheese, a little chocolate, honey, pears, all classic things. Or even, I think, uh, comté with some dried apricots, some almonds, or an, a really aged comté where you get those dark chocolate notes can be great to serve along like a chocolate-covered almond. Uh, any others? Okay, gorgonzola with sherry, or you could swing over to a French cheese like a Roquefort or a Femme d'Ambert. Good. Um, and with a white wine. If someone is uh, doing a casual evening at home, they're going to pop a bottle of, uh, say, it's Sauvignon Blanc. Ah, okay. I'm still seeing some really great after-dinner pairings or anytime pairings. The blackberry and the sheep's milk cheese, the Tom de Bribby. Perfect, perfect. You guys are all very practiced pairs. That's fantastic. Um, oh, the last thing I wanted to add for an after-dinner um, kind of conversation piece, I love an old-fashioned, an old-fashioned cocktail with any sort of alpine cheese that would include like Comte from the Jura Mountains. If you've never tried an old-fashioned and an alpine, it's one of my, my kind of ultimate party favorites because people don't think that you're going to serve an, an old-fashioned cocktail with bourbon and bitters with an alpine cheese. But there's something about those winter spice notes that come through in the bitters that really marry well with a Beaufort or a Bondance or Comte. All right, great job on the game show. I think you're truly prepared for any kind of customer request. Um, Omar, nice selections there. Yeah, with the whites. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So this is a bit what we talked about, recommending and sampling cheeses. You might even think about during the holidays, putting out a little bit of signage. You know, have you ever suggested mulled wine and mimolette? Someone might see that and suddenly become curious using the vehicle of something that they would naturally be making, mulled wine, to try a cheese they wouldn't have imagined pairing with it. So then, you know, again, expanding their, their kind of uh, mental territory in the cheese department. Um, how about the next slide? Just a reminder that the Fromage uh, from Europe website has all the pronunciations of these cheeses like Forme d'Ambert. So if you're a little new to this conversation, do not feel intimidated. Just know that you have great resources at your fingertips. Next slide. Here are some easy recipes you could recommend. These are from the website. You probably have your own. You sound like a pretty experienced crowd. You might even talk recipes with your guests to find out what they're cooking and are there ways that you can meet their cheese needs there. This includes a lot of warm cheese situations. Great for winter. Next slide. All right, moving on to cheese shop talk. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, so about six years ago, I decided to really hit Paris hard and go to as many French cheese shops as I could. And that's because the question I get after, asked most, either in you know comments on social media or DM is, I'm going to France, what cheese should I eat? And then hundreds of times I've heard, I'm going to Paris, which cheese shop should I visit? And I felt like I had spent about a decade in cheese, really focusing on what was available in the US. And I hadn't done enough time just exploring French cheese shops. So I got an Airbnb for a week in the center of Paris and I made myself a map so that I could go to two to three 
French fromageries each day. I didn't get on any transportation other than my own feet. And I just did a, a French cheese vision quest. If this interests you, just know that I think Paris is a city with more cheese shops than any other city I've ever visited. Not that I've been all around the world, but it's impossible to walk a few blocks without passing a French cheese shop. And they are so inspiring. One reason that they're so inspiring is because they're really focused on cheese. Whereas in the United States, I feel like as specialty stores, often we have cheeses, but then there's charcuterie over here. Maybe there's prepared foods over there. And then there's a whole section of like sodas and drinks. And so there's a lot of distraction going on around the cheese. In France, most cheese shops just sell cheese. Maybe they sell a few bottles of wine. Maybe there are some crackers. But you'd have to look hard. The focus is really on cheese. And um, their presentation is really inspiring too. Often these feel like little jewelry cases and the cheeses are kind of immaculately set out. And it's really, really an inviting experience. Let's hit the next slide. This is just to give you some images into French cheese, uh, cheese shops. Um, this is a little bit of information about pre-cuts, which of course is an easy opportunity to use some great signage and ins inspire someone as they are conveniently picking something up to maybe try something new. Um, next slide. Uh, and also to provide some accompaniments around cheeses. You may already know this, but things like honey, um, berry jams, which are so great with triple creams and breeze, stone fruit jams, which are great with your stinkers, pickles, nuts, chocolates, um, bringing some of those elements even up next to the cheese case or next to a grouping of cut and wrapped cheeses can be a way to inspire people to explore pairings. Next slide. Some suggestions on signage. And again, a really beautiful and very French cheese display, right? Where there's even kind of animal shapes uh, and things like lily of the valley and the cheese case. One of the things that strikes me whenever I go to France is how many herbs and wildflowers or flowers are kind of festooned around the cheeses in the case. So there are these elements that really make you feel a bit like you are in the field. Uh, next slide. This is some uh, information about the ongoing promotion of fromage from France. Next slide. Just a few terms in case these are unfamiliar to you. The word fermier in French is a lot like our word for farmstead, meaning it's a cheese made on the same property where the animals are uh, raised. Then you've got cooperatives, which is think of um, Comte. We have a lot of small dairy farms all pooling their milk into one central area where the cheese is made. Uh, but still there's this real emphasis on quality, not moving the milk very far, getting the cheese to the, or getting the milk to the creamery as quickly as possible. So, um, you know, even if it's not fermier, there is really still this emphasis on quality and on closeness. The, the farms are right around the uh, cooperative creameries. And then artisanal, which is similar to fermier, but maybe you have one cheesemaker and they're supplementing their milk with the milk of nearby farms. Next slide. Okay, this is um, an interesting slide. I want to point out that one of the things that's kind of exciting in France is that often there is not a cheese counter in the shop anymore. And that's because uh, it's expensive to take up uh, real estate with a counter. So often the cheesemonger will meet you as you come in, like kind of like a docent in a museum and then take you around and answer questions or point out special things. Um, so it's part of a very different kind of cheese retail experience. Uh, and it really allows the person who is shopping for cheese to have that personal connection with the cheesemonger and ask questions. One of the things I want to encourage you to do is just give your customers some knowledge. One of the reasons I set out a Briette Savarin tonight, and I just bought this at the store here in Belgium today, this is a beautiful uh, triple cream from France, is just to encourage your um, your customers to know something, especially about bloomy cheeses, just because they're such a popular style, like how to determine ripeness. For example, um, this one, 
you know, it's still mostly a white cheese. And what I would tell the, you know, the consumer is it's, um, it, this cheese is probably going to be great in four or five days. It's mostly a white downy uh, rind. And once you see a little, some straw-like, uh, you know, stippling straw-like color on this cheese, it's going to be getting a little bit more ripe. So you could talk to your customer a little bit about cheese ripening and how you make your selections or how they can um, make, you know, how they can select cheeses depending on whether they want something that's more fresh and young or a little bit more aged and a little more pungent. That would be a cheese that has a little bit more in terms of marking. The more you empower your customer to select cheeses, to ask for things that they're curious about, the more you will have that ongoing relationship. And that's really what I hope to leave you with today. I think you're all a very inspired and passionate bunch. You had great responses in the chat. Thank you for that. I just want to really express my appreciation and respect for what you do because I think it inspires customers to live different lives, to taste new things, to celebrate um, with cheeses that bring them a lot of joy and excitement, and then to travel to those places to explore more. So I leave you with that. I also want to thank you just for representing great cheese. As you know, France has an incredible tradition of cheese making. And so by carrying these cheeses, you are supporting a tradition. You are supporting the person who got up and milked the cows, the person making the cheese, um, and the families whose livelihood depends on these products. So your role in this on the front line is so, so important. So I just really wanted to make that known. Any questions? Anything you want to run out and try? Are there? A, um, are we getting a copy of the slides? Would you like a copy of the slides? I would love a copy of the slides. Yes, it's easy. Um, that's the one thing. I'm sure. And then. If you have any trick about uh, how do you educate Americans about uh, best buy dates versus use by dates, um, you know, there so a lot of the cheesies come with the date on there, and you know, you can still eat them really nicely, like even a month later sometimes. So um, it's hard to educate. I had to, just to tell you a quick story. I had somebody returning me some Himalayan pink salt because there was an expiration date on there, a best by date. And I was like, you know, that salt have been in there for like millions of years. So probably, <laughs> so if you have any trick, it's just, just always a, a fun part for us here. Okay, that's interesting. But I feel like you just gave the best explanation, which is to say, yeah, that's a corporate date that has to appear on packaging. But, you know, as you get to know cheeses more, you'll discover that, you know, um, really unless it smells strongly of ammonia or unless it looks really unappealing um you know it's kind of a personal preference right in terms of when to eat a cheese i'm sure that that's a, a difficult thing for Mar americans to accept but omar it sounds like you had a really good response yeah when i did not own a cheese shop um when I was going to another one i always took the products on sales because they were like past the date and that was the best ones <laughs> Which is so different in France, where you go and see this little basket next to the door of all these highly aged goat cheeses, right? The furrier and the more rock hard, the better it makes people, um, you know, think of them kind of like souvenirs. Uh, yeah, it's a very different mindset, I think, in the States in terms of there's a lot of more fear around spoilage, things like that. Um, but hopefully, you know, by getting to know you and by building a relationship with them and, and inspiring their trust, um, they'll come and ask you questions, which is the most important thing. Any other final questions? Or offerings? You know, is there any response you've had to a French cheese in your shop or from a customer you've begun to build a relationship with? Anything that is working in terms of uh, instilling curiosity in people? Uh, 
I think tasting is always great. Um, we do that on the weekends and um, we also do in our newsletter like a cheese of the month. So people can come and try. Uh, we offer a little discount for the cheese of the month and they come in and discover something new, which is usually something that, you know, we have ordered in advance as a larger quantity. And uh, we, we just like, that's how we have people in Boulder, Colorado, discover uh, a little bit more of the cheeses. Oh, that's terrific. Omar, do people come in and ask for that cheese by name once they've read yeah. about it? Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, great. we did. We just did that. Uh, I think this month was the Petit Cantal because it was okay. just like perfectly coming. And uh, we ordered two wheels and um, they, they're all gone. And we do also like a little, I, I know a lot of the shops do that, but we do a little sample box. So mm -hmm. whatever like smaller cuts we have, we put them in there and it's usually cheeses under $10 or $5 and uh, people pick that up. They really love that to explore new cheeses. Absolutely. I, I feel like Americans love those little kind of small pieces of cheese where they can taste something maybe they're, they wouldn't take a, a, a big risk on for a whole hunk. But if you make these small pieces available, I, I have so many people who tell me, oh, yeah, I never go to the cheese counter. I just buy lots of little small pieces and then I take it home and my family tries it. And I think, yeah, you know, people just shop differently. And that's one customer who is then kind of self-studying their way through the case by by tasting the smaller cuts um you, know, you can also play with social media letting people know about an interesting cheese at the counter asking them to come ask for it by name and then maybe you offer them a, a pairing or something a little bit special uh alongside to sort of build that trust to build that relationship so that you know that they are following along i love the idea of a monthly cheese in a newsletter you could also do the same thing on social media monthly or weekly one thing we like to do in our shop sampling yeah. is that if one person asks for a sample, um, if there's like five people standing at the counter, we just like hand a sample to everybody of that cheese and, and they didn't even ask for it. But we're like, hey, I'm giving a sample. Does every Nobody's going to say no. So, <laughs> so. The game, it creates a party vibe, right? It's like, ah, you know, why serve it to one when you can serve it to a whole line full of people? And then maybe you get them talking and tasting together. That's beautiful. Cheese is so social. I feel like that's why people love to eat it. And that's why cheese boards became so popular during the pandemic. It was something social and interactive. It's a finger food. So the more people can touch it, taste it together, talk to someone as they're eating it in that shop situation, the more they'll relax, the more they'll feel like they're having a good time, that they're at a little bit of a happy hour, even though they're shopping. And I feel like that's really how you create some magic around a food that is sometimes perceived as pretty unapproachable or uh, intimidating in the United States. Getting them to touch it, taste it, talk about it, suddenly demystifies it. They're having a good time. Anything else that's working for you? Thanks for the great suggestions. I see Austin was talking about uh, little checklists as well in the chat ah i didn't see that yeah yeah also a nice a nice one people like checking off their list when they find or buy a new cheese this is a, a nice way of of exploring as well absolutely i mean looking at this map for today's presentation i was thinking have i eaten a cheese from every region of france um wouldn't that be a fun thing to do to eat your way around the country um, so maybe there are things that could be created, you know, that sort of stem from this campaign that inspires people to learn a little bit more about the geography of France um, and to taste their way around the country, especially because there are just so many French cheeses. So I almost feel like you need a way to help people plug in. Um, they might not want to eat the entire cheese shop, but they might love the idea of eating their way around France, you know, during the winter months or something like that, or having a map and being able to check off the different cheeses as they taste it. Great idea. Mm. So um, just jumping in that culture is going to be providing the participating shops with uh, those brochures that we saw on the slides. Um, those should be arriving very soon, and it has that map on there, so you can reference that. Um, and then a, a few more um, informational type tidbits about the campaign and about the cheeses. And then um, you can always direct customers to both of the sites for uh, 
um, culture and for the Fromage from Europe campaign site as well. So if you have any questions along the way, you can reach out to culture, you can reach out to us, we'll reach out to Aurora. Um, Tanaya, thank you so much for thank your you. wonderful presentation and for joining us from it was Belgium. so much fun. Um, and thank you, Aurora, for the overview of the campaign. And we're really looking forward to this. I'm excited to see what everyone's going to do with this campaign. It's always, last year was fun and exciting and it was during the 4th of July. So we had like a 4th of July theme. And then this year it's fall into fromage. So um, I think a lot of good inspiration ideas came from this conversation. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you all. And if anybody wants to connect on Instagram to continue talking about French cheese, feel free to shoot me a DM. Um, like I said, I'm right here on the French border. If there's anything you want me to look for for you, I can. Oh, um, someone asked, and this is relevant to everyone, where can you find the details for reporting for the campaign? Um, Shauna is our contact that does our retail partnerships. And so she will be in touch when the campaign's wrapped up about reporting. I do know that there are certain requirements that we have with um, like the social media posts and um, sales and that sort of thing. So we'll be in touch very soon with that information. Okay, great. So thanks everyone for coming and I hope you all have a great rest of your week and we will all be in touch soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.